God damn. All right, let's fucking go. Sounding tired. I only drew for about six hours last night. Guilty Gear Strive soundtrack. Guilty Gear is not a good uh, good content for drawing, not gonna lie. It's uh, it's too high tension. I had to watch that, actually, because uh, if you Google images of Izumi Konata, 99% of them are her, her looking left, except based on the desk placement of Space Ghost Coast to Coast, she has to be looking right, stage right. So I needed to make sure that her hair reverses direction when she's facing the opposite direction yet for some reason on the internet 99% of the images are her facing left so ball what the fuck am I watching guys uh all the fellow old people in chat zoomers will not understand that in 2005 when uh, we saw anime girls dancing in Motteke Serafku, everybody fucking cummed in their pants. It blew our minds. We're like, is that a cute anime girl dancing? Oh my god! Ah! Ah! Yeah. It was a different time, guys. It was a different time. We're like, are those... Showed any girls talking to each other? Ah! Back when 4chan was only 52% racism. Back when if somebody came onto 4chan and asked what anime you were watching like that guy in chat just did right now 
you would be told to get the fuck out and leave and never come back. You know, before we had Trump and uh, a bunch of election tourists and stuff. I had female anime friends. Were those uh, female friends that you had that watched anime? Or was that you pretending that the females in the anime you were watching were your friends? Both seems pretty likely because, uh, you know... First option... I mean, we have more female anime friends now than we've ever had before. So it's not like it was something that was special back then. You could say that was when the, uh, the, uh, normization of anime truly started around the time of Haruhi. When you had, uh, anime weeb otaku... Just sort of uh, going mainstream. We've always been there. Silence, woman. You must be, uh... You should be seen, not heard. But in the case of female anime otaku, it's better if they're not seen as well. To be honest. Like most otaku. Otaku are best when they're not seen, period. But now we have, like, professional cosplayers whose job it is to be attractive and be seen by other people, so... The times have sure changed. I heard that there was some sort of poll that polled Americans and like 40% of the younger generation say they follow the latest anime trend. Like more people of the younger generation now watch the latest flavor of the month anime than they watch the NFL is what I heard or some shit like that. Did anyone see this survey? I saw it on the Japanese internet, so I'm not sure if that's real. But it feels real if you're on the internet, honestly. If they really like you, they tilt the yaoi paddle to the side and hit you with the narrow end over your lower spine and cripple you from the waist down and chain you up in their basement and dress you like a cat boy and that's where you remain till you die of starvation and neglect. Someone's gonna post, God, I wish that were me in chat right now, of course. If only I could die. <laughs> internet people, not normies, IRL. Even if we're limiting it to internet people, I think it's still a... We've gotten to the point where, A, there's enough people with fucking phones that internet people are also normies at this point. And enough percentage of the internet people are fucking watching anime that... Like, I know that... Or I'm assuming that none of you are Zoomers here because you're not supposed to be watching this stream unless you're over 18, but... 
It's, uh... I'm pretty sure that if you go to the local middle school right now, literally every single one of them, uh, one of these, like, 40% like of the kids in every class are like, Oh my god! Have you seen the latest Chainsaw Man episode or some shit like that, so... That shit be bussing for real, for real, on God. Most Zoomers are in their 20s now. What are we supposed to call the people below them? Gen Alpha? Is Gen Alpha still in elementary school? I can't tell where these generation shit ends. There are probably people in the chat who can't go near the local middle school. To be fair, uh, the restraining order sex offender list doesn't actually physically stop you from going to the middle school. It just gets you with a lot of uh, trouble with the local police force and FBI son. If they find out that you were there, that's all. You're free. Don't let the man tell you what you can or can't do. You can't see those kinds of laws from space. Oldest ones are in their mid-teens. Uh, I see. Once there's grass on the field, it's time to play ball. Hashtag uh, sex offender list. Middle schoolers spend their time power scaling Jujutsu Kaisen. That's right. I forgot that Jujutsu Kaisen was, the, was actually the, the real... Uh, flavor of the month right now. More like Puputsu Geisen. I heard that uh, the Fujoshi are uh, losing interest in uh, their latest yaoi boy toy, Gojo-kun, from Jujutsu Kaisen, because he jobbed too hard. Is that true? This is in Japan, where the, uh, the readers of Jujutsu Kaisen are ma manga readers, not, uh, the anime-only consumers that we have in America, because Americas can't read. Middle schools spend their time on Discord, Reddit, spamming about how Utah is actually a very well-written character. Middle schoolers shitting their pants over one word in solo leveling. Gojo fucking dies, that's why. The only manga episode of Jujutsu Kaisen that I've actually read was when, I, was when I tuned in after watching about three episodes to the manga. And I was like, let's see where, where the manga is at. And I, uh... Turn to the 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 chapter in which Gojo Kun was fucking jobbing. So says a lot about society. Anime only pleb nation. It we'll see if. Uh, Western Jujutsu Kaisen anime only plebs lose interest in their boy toys once we get to the point where uh, shit starts to really go down and everybody realizes the author isn't has no kind of long term planning for their story or else is just shitting stuff out of their ass or whatever and then they all lose interest. Fuck this, I shouldn't have drawn just like a... Space Ghost looks like he's easy to draw, but he's not. He has such a weird body profile.
Guys, why is it that uh, people expect a coherent, satisfying storyline from stuff like Jujutsu Kaisen and get disappointed, whereas uh, JoJo fans will eat whatever shit is on the plate that Araki shits directly out of his ass into their mouth, and they're like, yum, 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 thank you, Araki-sensei, Udi, more JoJo quality content. I truly enjoy uh, Gold Experience Requiem. Just being like, now I have godlike powers. Hey, Palska, thanks for the Prime sub. I appreciate the support. Actually, it's not a Prime sub, it's a normal sub. 24 months, Jesus Christ, I've been doing this for two years. What the fuck? How did that happen? I've felt for a while that Araki's art has a snobby aura about it. It's hard to put into words. Maybe snobby isn't it. By snobby, do you mean uh, anatomically correct? Jojo fans hiding their manga covers that look gayer than your their typical yaoi comic. Yeah, there's uh, particularly a lot of ones in part 7 in which they the art started to look extremely gay. In which uh, Jairo Tsepoli is holding, what's his name, Jojo. Whichever Jojo variant name part 7 Jojo is. In an extremely homosexual manner. But it's okay, it's because he's a cripple, not because uh, they're incredibly gay for each other. He forgot his roots, man. Lisa, Lisa, and Maria. I mean, let's be honest. Even when Jojo had relatively attractive women, I don't think Araki's heart was ever in it. He only cares about drawing statuesque Renaissance uh, statue bodies for men. I remember when Josuke was the gayest looking Jojo, now he looks like a Giga Chat in comparison, yes. The twinkification of JoJo's is worrying. I haven't read anything of Part 8 yet, so... I haven't entered the full twink zone, but they're pretty hard, hardcore twink in 7 already. 
My favorite is part five, so. Newest one has an openly trans character as opposed to uh, the hidden trans character in part six which was drawn as a, uh, a female but the editors decided that uh, having a lesbian relationship in a manga about prison drama was, was hit, hitting too close to home so they decided that no you have to change it into a man and thus Anasui was born. Diver down! Uh, Now that uh, Araki is away from the main pages of Jump and his political power has reached a peak, there are no editors that can tell him to not draw something that he wants to draw. So uh, if he wants to go full down Twinkification Road for JoJo characters, literally nobody can stop him. Just like nobody can stop Oda from drawing 10,000 characters in every single panel and thus delaying One Piece even further and ruining his eyesight. Nobody can stop Araki from drawing more and more Twinkified Jojo characters. While Part 3 did have pedophilic fan service and rapist gorillas, I disagree that it was the greatest. I wasn't a huge fan of part three. In fact, I watched the anime in uh, the order of part five, part four, part one, part two, and I'm on part three and I'm having difficulty finishing part three. Part three is my least favorite of the JoJo parts, actually. I don't like travelogue JoJo, which is a lar large part of JoJo, of course. But, uh, yeah, I don't like when Araki goes into his travel logs. I'm not sure why. I think I like travel logs as a whole, but JoJo travel logs, I don't like them. Same face syndrome, true. Part 7 onward, the strange face syndrome uh, gets really bad. He found his niche in part three. I feel like he found his niche in part three, but he didn't really refine it. He refined it through part four and uh, in part five, it kind of peaks in terms of the silliness of stand battles. Part five and part six, it peaks. And then after part seven, it starts to become excessive is kind of my a feeling.
I like it when weebs try to convince you the ending of part 5 made any fucking sense. The reason why I'm uh, talking about JoJo anyways is when I woke up and opened my phone and didn't want to get up, I instinctively opened 4chan. And uh, of course on the video games board, they're talking about something completely unrelated to video games. And in this case it was uh, how to beat King Crimson. And uh, people were explaining both King Crimson and Gold Experience Requiem as if they made complete sense. They're like, oh ha ha. They were like, there were literally about 10 people talking about how uh, King Crimson uh, denies cause or erases cause and produces only effect where... Whereas Gold Experience Requiem erases the effect and only goes to the cause or some shit like that, as if that made any kind of sense. As if, like, that shit... If you take five seconds to think about it, the then you realize that uh, your explanation of how it makes sense makes no fucking sense. Especially all the people that are saying like Gold Experience Requiem erases everything including the fact that Diablo dies so then he dies infinitely and then I just wanted to those people I want to say bro he literally dies it's not erasing the effect of him dying he just straight up dies. We see him die 10,000 times. It's not erasing shit. He just keeps on dying many times. There's some authors that get forgiven for everything and some that can't slip up for a second or they get blasted immediately. Yes. An interesting way to think about this is offense and defense. I read somewhere regarding... Um, uh, this was regarding the light novels, but I think it applies to manga and other things as well. And they were talking about the author of, um, the, what was it called? Uh, Toaru Majutsu, Rail Dex and Index author, who can write, like, five books per day. And he just writes and writes and writes and just spits shit out at an insane speed. And it was like an editor talking about how that guy, uh, he ha he's like 100% offense and 0% defense. And in this case, what they meant was offense is the ability to think up interesting content like special moves and stuff that will keep the user engaged and still reading. So like excitement based content on a day-to-day -day basis and defense is the ability to write stuff where the when the more inquisitive readers go back and actually question what the fuck is going on with your story like you can write a coherent storyline that makes sense and holds up so it's much more important for example if you're a uh, a mystery writer to have a good defense than it is to have a good offense because if the fucking mystery storyline is just all over the place then people will feel like they're cheated if like the uh the murder mystery doesn't make any fucking sense right but if you're just writing shonen shit you can just go all offense and not worry about defense at all araki is a uh, a very high offense writer when it comes to shit There's also another thing that I remember from my college days. They forced us to watch a documentary in class about New York graffiti artists in the 90s. And I remember one of the graffiti artists saying, if you have style and substance, style always wins, which is a really interesting con idea. Especially in the terms of graffiti, because, like, what the fuck is substance in graffiti? But that kind of stuck with me. 
Because we usually are like style versus substance. It's important to have substance. But this guy was like, nah, fuck substance. Style is everything. Araki is a good example of that as well. As long as you have like an extremely distinct style that other people can't provide with you, you can get away with like your substance being absolute shit. DBZ style over substance for real, guys. Whatever like plot or anything that DBZ has, it just is completely shits the bed, right? People are just like, this is so fucking cool and that's about it. Banksy equals substance equals shit, am I right? A good example of this is Makoto Shinkai movies. I fucking hate Makoto Shinkai. He absolutely triggers the hell out of me. In Japan, there's an overabundance of this sort of idolization of youth and like pure feelings. The Japanese word is seishun, which is like blue spring in terms of characters, but it's the uh, the youthful period when you're full of emotions and stuff. And Shinkai Makoto is just like that turned up to 100 and he never fucking breaks out of it. It's always just like cute high school girls doing cute things and like running running in the Japanese countryside in the rain while the sunlight pours down and there's a fucking rainbow in the background and you can see the stars out and she's crying because she uh, secretly loves some guy and he's going back to the future or some shit and he's done that for like eight movies now and every time he produces something all the all the fucking normies eat that shit up. They just gobble that shit off the plate. And it's not as bad if you're living in America because in America everything is horrible. So like pure anime schoolgirls feels refreshing as hell. But uh, if you're in Japan, like everything is that. So it gets easy to get sick of that shit. Damn, eight movies. It's not eight movies. It's probably like four. Shinkai Makoto movies. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It's actually twelve. I actually underestimated. Let's say uh, five centimeters per second. This is first like full full size movie because it's not a short film. Or the place of promise in early days. That's what makes it from two thousand four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's actually exactly eight. I didn't. I don't know shit about him because I hate his stuff. But I completely guessed that correctly. Garden of Words was based though. Guy wants to fuck his teacher and there's nice rain effects in it. You just described literally every Shinkai Makoto movie. It's just like pretty background and uh, youthful feelings towards sex, but he, he doesn't say it as, uh, as obviously. If there is a button in which uh, if I could push it and it would take all the living years of Shinkai Makoto and give them to Kon Satoshi instead. I would push it 8,000 times in a row. And then if the demon that gave me the button was like, haha, I tricked you. That button doesn't work. You're not bringing Satoshi Kon back to life. You actually just killed Shinkai Makoto. I'd be like, oh no, anyways.
you just added 8,000 years to Shinkai Makoto's lifespan. It would be funnier if it was 8,000 years added to uh, fucking Miyazaki Hayao's lifespan. That would be the funniest. Because he's already old as fuck. It's like, oh great. We're getting 8,000 years more of uh, Miyazaki. He's claiming he's not going to make another movie, but he definitely is. What's going to happen is he's going to be making his next fucking movie and then he's going to die like halfway through it. Workaholic boomers cannot stop working. Why are you drawing this instead of your manga? I got hooked the moment Dark Elf were involved. Um, because uh, I'm receiving money from Patreon, so... I thought it would be good to take a little break from manga making to practice other stuff. Also, I don't make much progress when I'm streaming anyways, so I was just like, whatever. You could say that Shinkai Makoto is the uh, proper inheritor of Miyazaki's power. Not necessarily of the good stuff that Miyazaki produces, but the uh, the Westerner an introduction, introduction to anime weebdom starter pack that Miyazaki Hayao content is. He's like that girl at college that you know that has the fucking Ghibli box set who is like, I love anime. And what she means by I love anime, she means uh, spirited away. Wind is Rising was his best movie, t to be honest. He still has his touch. I think his best movie is uh, Porco Rosso, which is a similar theme, by the way, but... I feel like it's his most wish-fulfillment fantasy movie. It's just him. It's literally him because he self-inserts as a pig. It's literally him flying around on his fucking cool-ass plane in the Adriatic Sea between World War I and World War II being fucking awesome and getting the girls, including the fucking 13-year-old Loli Cone girl and the older woman as well. And being a cool, fashionable dandy. It's just like massive wish fulfillment fantasy. But he's a, a fucking genius. So it actually works as a movie. Ball is the only artist I know who gets more attention from his memes than from his porn. One day I will draw a porn that people are like, you know what, I like your memes, but the porn is better. It will happen at some point. I believe in myself. I can do it. I just need to uh, work on my AI Laura and then mix my artistic talent with more talented hentai artists. Not gonna lie, the older woman in that one is hella based. The good thing about Miyazaki is, despite being a massive lolicon, he doesn't limit himself to his lolicon-ness. He also has a lot of based older women who are hot. He's kind of like the Hollywood uh, virgins and whores trope, except instead of virgins as whores, he has young underage girls and spunky older ladies that will beat the shit out of you with their rolling pin and stuff. He doesn't have, like, sex pot young females that are just, like, straight up sexy. He only has 13-year-olds and then, like, older women. Miyazaki has been inserting himself all his life in his work. True. But he considers himself a pig. So that's how you know that um, he's like self-inserting in the most extreme version. I read one of his manga, which was a manga about um, World War II German tank drivers trying to get back to Germany before they get killed by Soviets at the end of the war. 
And all the characters were drawn as pigs, all the male characters at least. So that was him. When he goes into military fantasy, that's when he goes like full self-insert mode usually. Dola is my favorite Miyazaki character to be honest. My favorite Miyazaki character is uh, Kaonashi the Faceless. Because he's just literally like me. He's like, uh, 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 and he can't say anything. And then if a girl is nice to him for one second, he falls in love with her and tries to give her presents and shit. Just kidding, that's not like me at all, but it's uh, probably the most accurate depiction of pathetic weeb otaku, sad otaku men that we've ever had in anime. This guy who has, like, no face and can't say anything except, uh. How on God's green earth did the dad in Ponyo fuck a giant water goddess? I can't remember a single thing about Ponyo. I just remember the animation being insanely based. Is that the story? I can't remember anything about the story. Is that why there's like a fish girl? Because the dad went and got it on with a massive, massive fish woman water goddess. I remember the water goddess showing up. The animation in Ponyo is like fucking off the charts. The way they animate water and the way like swimming and shit goes on. That was just, like, the studio fucking flexing on every other animator out there. Miyazaki himself with a cigarette and Thousand Miles Stare is my favorite Miyazaki character. He might actually not make another movie because Takahata died. But I think he will. And Takahata was probably more of his right-hand man than we all realize. Drawing water is so fucking hard. A whole movie of nothing but water is crazy. Yeah. Animators really do be like, Oh, you want me to draw three dragons flying around? This is too easy. I want to draw something more difficult. Which was from a uh, interview of Trigger, the studio Trigger guys animating Dungeon Meshi. One of the animators... I just saw like a clip on Twitter, they were interviewing him, and he was like, I want to draw something more difficult. And they're like, what are you drawing right now? I'm drawing like three dragons flying around and breathing fire in this image. But you know, this doesn't really count. I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ, these people. Kaguyakim is the best Ghibli movie by far. I started to watch it for like five minutes, and I was fucking done immediately. When we got to minute four of just like the old guy and the old lady fighting over who gets to raise the baby. I was just like, I don't fucking care how good this animation is. This is boring as fuck. I'm not gonna watch this shit. I think the general consensus in the J Japanese internet is that Naputa is his best work and I kind of agree with that. It's the most concise I would say. In terms of both, like, narrative. It has all the styles of early Ghibli that makes it so legendary. And it is it has a very good, concise narrative. It'd probably be uh, Laputa or uh, Princess Mononoke, I would say, for best work. That's just, like, overall best, not my favorite stuff. I remember watching the wind rises in Jap Japanese, hating them MCs. It took me two years to find out that fucking Hideaki Anno voicing him. Yeah, uh, Miyazaki hates voice actors and the seiyuu voice acting industry in Japan. So he's just like, I'd rather have a literal friend of mine, a fucking animator voice this shit, than have like a pr professional voice actor. 
So, uh, yeah, that's just the way it is. He liked using celebrities and stuff. He just hates whatever voice acting skills that Japanese people have. The voice acting business in Japan is the total opposite of the way it is in the West. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, even if you're a voice actor in Japan that has like 10,000 anime under your belt and is celebrated within the industry, you still have to do auditions for literally every single part. There's basically no nepotism. If you look at the Wikipedia pages of like all these famous voice actors, you're like, oh, they've truly made it. They're a celebrated voice actor. They don't have to do any more work. And then even in like year 40 of their c career, they're still doing like voice acting for, you know, person in the classroom number three and stuff like that. Because you literally just audition from, for every single part, every single fucking time. Whereas in America, it's just like there's five voice actors and they get all the good parts and nobody ever, ever gets to break into the, mid the top level stuff. If you're not like Nolan North or whoever the fuck, you're never ever going to get to voice a main character. It's so weird how like, it's the exact opposite. They're actual celebrities, yes. In terms of getting jobs, they have to audition for every role and then they're actual celebrities in the Japanese culture in that like they have a bunch of cringe anime otaku checking the female voice actresses uh, Twitter timeline on Christmas to make sure that they're not dating somebody. Five US voice actors and Steve Blum is two of them. Yeah. For one thing, America produces way less animated content than Japan, but they also uh, have like massive nepotism. And then when they actually produce a real movie, movie, animated movie. They make sure they get Hollywood actors instead of voice actors to voice that shit. So voice actors are basically people who can't make it in Hollywood and get to work on the bit parts. It's such a weird contrast. It's no wonder why uh, Japan is beating the shit out of America right now culturally. Like, it, it's actually surprising that it took this long to get to this point where, uh, America has finally bent the knee to Japan. Because it seems like it was a long time coming. Nolan North is behind this. Wait, who the fuck is Nolan North? Did I get the wrong name? Ollie North. Yeah, that's right. Nobody fucking knows the Iran-Contra crisis, guys. I know we think that uh, the 1980s and the Reagan era was just a few days ago, but all the Zoomers are like, what the fuck are you talking about? Blame Aladdin and Robin Williams. Yeah, that's probably where it started. Did they, do we not have celebrity voice actors before Robin Williams doing Aladdin? I mean, that was obviously like shit turned up to 11, so it's not surprising why that became the standard going forward. But now it's just like if there's a, a Japanese anime movie that is even slightly popular as soon as it gets ported to America by you know, fucking Disney who buys the rights. They're like, what Hollywood actors can we get for these voices? Let's fucking make sure that Bruce Willis is voicing Spike Spiegel or whatever. It's just like, come on, man. I worked with a 20-year-old Zoomer who was born after September 11th and have very strong opinions on the Middle East. Jesus. Well, it's not like Middle East conflict is going out of style. That's one thing where uh, he'll always be qualified to have opinions for. It's good to know that we're not uh, robbing the Zoomers of their opportunity to have opinions on the Middle East. 
by having peace in the Middle East or something. They'll have plenty of opportunities to uh, have pol political opinions on the Middle East, LMAO. I guess the Middle East is to us as Russia shit is to past generations. No, the Middle East was always having violent problems, even while we had, like, USSR and stuff, so... Hold on, I have to fart. One second. <clears throat> there we go. That will be an extra $5. Please pay for the premium brat package. At least you see your tax dollars at work in Israel and Ukraine. Does Israel really need U.S. Uh, military support? Don't they have like a gazillion dollars? 4chan told me that the uh, the Jewish tribe was the richest, wealthiest group of people on the planet. Don't they have like Sheldon Adelson, Casino Magnet, donating like a billion dollars to them every year? Do I really have to give my tax dollars to Israel? I don't want my money to go to Israel. I want it to go to Ukraine to kill Russians. Unfortunately, the way the U.S. Congress works, the only way that you can get the spending package for Ukraine passed is uh, to get the uh, spending package for Israel passed. Because for some reason, the Republicans have turned into like pro-Russian tankies, but they haven't changed their stance on giving all of the national budget to Israel for some reason. <laughs> I don't know how this has happened. But, like, that's just the way it is, so... Israel's problem is that they have to keep all their reservists mobilized now and tank their GDP by 20%. I mean, they might have money, but they don't have much population, right? So if they actually have to do ground war shit... They're, uh, they kind of have a problem there. I don't have money to give. Sorry, Israel. If you're living in the United States and you have, like, a job, then, uh, you are giving money to Israel whether you like it or not. That's how taxes work. You're also giving money to a bunch of other stupid shit besides Israel as well, but... I want Netanyahu to have its face down in his own stinker and apologize instead of doing more shit. He really, uh, despite having one of the worst security failures of all time, he kind of made out of this like a bandit because now he's like a wartime president so he doesn't have to resign when like a year ago he was being like court-martialed or something for massive corruption and shit. But, uh, yeah... I don't know, I don't know if the whole, you know, thousands of people getting killed by Hamas thing is helping his ass, but it kind of feels like it is. At least it's kind of hard to remove him right now. The moment he gets deposed, his head will roll down the stairs, he doesn't invite any sympathy from anybody. I think he has pretty strong, uh, uh, what do you call it, the Orthodox Jew support within Israel, which sort of keeps him going. Of course, if you, uh, if you market yourself as being like the security guy and it results in you getting a bunch of terrorists inside your country and getting thousands of people killed, that's probably not a good look either, so. I just want him unalived. That's, uh, the, the Jewish opinion we have from the stream right here. How old is he? He feels like the same exact age as like every other old person that we have in our current geritocracy. Benjamin Netanyahu age. He's 74. Literally everybody in politics right now is 74 years old. Vladimir Putin is 71. 
Everybody is between the years of 71 and 81. Nobody is like fucking 50 except, you know, Canadian President Justin Blackface Trudeau. It's the Orthodox outside of Israel who condemn him the most, which is so funny. I thought that it was more like liberal Jews who didn't like the current Israel's behavior. I don't know the difference between Orthodox Jews outside of Israel and Orthodox Jews inside Israel. I thought they were supposed to be just like preoccupied with studying the Torah or whatever. Israelis and Palestinians actually can live together like the hostages high five Hamas. I've read in many places that the entire reason that Hamas is, you know, so active and doing a popular in Israel is because uh, Benjamin Netanyahu basically promoted them because he didn't want to uh, appease the Palestinian Authority, which was obviously more moderate or some shit. I don't know how real this is. It seems like a false flag event kind of theory, but it's probably not. It's probably more real. I don't know. So if you had less extreme Israeli politicians, you probably would have less extreme Palestinian terrorist organizations, and then people would be... See, the whole, the whole thing about world politics and all politics in general is that when you don't have enough chill people and you get the uh, the extremes on any side having power, bad shit tends to happen. So you have to make sure that you have enough moderates to keep shit together. And once the moderate starts to lose power, everything always goes south. It just depends what direction it's going to go south in based on... Uh, what type of people get power, but it usually goes in the same direction, which is a lot of people end up dying. Less extreme terrorists? You think it's a fucking joke, but ISIS literally got destroyed because they were so extreme that even the most extreme of terrorists like Al-Qaeda was like, now nah, fuck these guys. Northern Ireland is relatively peaceful because we decided that the uh, IRA was less extreme terrorists and, you know, we could have a truce with them and stuff like that. So the concept of less extreme terrorists is like a real fucking thing. Now, because of Netanyahu, Hamas is all the Palestinians have left and the Israelis have to live in fear of Hamas. Yeah. I'm glad I'm not living in Israel, not that they would let me in. Israelis living in fear is the biggest joke. Iranian missiles never killed Israelis, but Israelis always live in fear. I mean, it's one of those situations where the value of life isn't exactly the same. If one Israeli dies, it's a big deal. If like 10,000 Palestinians dies, you know, we don't really talk about Palestinians living in fear when they obviously do. It's like how nobody fucking talks about dead people in Africa, you know? The value of a single life is not the same, unfortunately. That's not true. You might have Jewish ancestry. Even if I was allowed to enter Israel, uh, I never would because it's in a fucking desert and I don't want to live in a hot location. If the average temperature isn't, like, below 70 degrees Fahrenheit, then I'm not gonna fucking live there. Count me out. We ain't doing that shit.
Palestinians are descended from the lost tribes of Israel. This reminds me of the guy who, uh, the internet meme guy who is saying, uh, the Jews fear the Samurai. Has anyone actually watched the entire speech that he makes? I only know of him as as the 4chan meme, but I don't know what he actually advocates. Is he like a pro-Nazi sympathizer or something that is tying like Japanese imperialism with like uh, Nazi thought or some shit? I don't really understand that guy. It's a great meme though. Yeah, he has a giant uh, swastika on the back, so... Arabs aren't a monolith. It's statistically tracked that the majority of terrorists are a religious, college-educated, and politically motivated. Yeah, went like uh, the Saudi September 11th uh, hijackers, all like, you know, PhD students, that level of education. They were all like wealthy as fuck Saudis that didn't ha really have many concerns in their life. They just got kind of caught up in the, the fun of being in a death cult. Who is he interviewing? I was thinking Konata and then talking about boob size. Both being characters that we no longer concern ourselves about. Thought you were going to go with Asuka. Konata is easier to draw. Say what you will about Lakista. Their characters are pretty fucking easy to draw. Makima meme would have been good. Jesus Christ, you fuckers can't, uh, you can't stop lusting after your dummy mommy for five seconds. I've already drawn Makima like five times. Hey, what's up? Are you still drawing eight hours per day? I'm trying to. I drew six hours yesterday before I was like, I can't do this shit anymore. Sometimes I draw like nine hours. The day before that, I took a full day off in which I did absolutely nothing. 
which is uh, you're not supposed to do that, unfortunately. I only drew for one hour. If I can't at least draw like a standard work day's worth of manga, I won't be able to go pro and I still kind of want to go pro because I can definitely go pro in terms of my drawing ability, which isn't that very important in terms of manga. The question is, uh, can I stomach drawing all day, every day, non-stop, forever? What is your favorite American cartoon? Fuck. Uh... What about the Clerks cartoon that got ended after like eight episodes or something? I hate to say this, but it might be Rick and Morty. I think Rick and Morty went to uh, went from being newly discovered to too popular that now everybody fucking hates it because uh, the fan base is insufferable. But if there was no Rick and Morty fan base and you just got to watch Rick and Morty on its own without having to deal with the online people that love it, I think it would I would like it very much. I didn't get to watch cartoons very much as a kid, so... I don't have much strong personal memories about cartoons besides, like, classic Warner Brothers stuff, which I could watch after school on uh, network TV because we had a Warner Brothers station. You could watch, like, Animaniacs and shit. Clerks had a show? Yes. Let's see if it shows up if I look for it on YouTube. It feels like something you would be able to find. Clerks animated show. safe or not yet. I am come to stay. Behold! Leonardo! The Clerks animated series was unironically better than the movies. It looks like a big bong. Hey, that looks like a big bong too. Now that's the ugliest damn bong I've ever seen. Need a Japanese dub for this? Within the six episodes before it got cancelled, they had an anime episode. Which of course they did. Not a fan of Kevin Smith? Me neither. I have seen Venture Brothers like two or three episodes, I'd say. I wonder if they'll show the anime segment. Okay. Just send them over. Fine. Hey, either of you guys want to buy some fireworks? No, thanks. Ew, you girls want to be alone? How did you get into Leonardo's office? Who the hell's Leonardo? What How long doing? is this? Jesus Christ, they put like 10 minutes of shit. What are you guys doing here? Look at them! <laughs> It was a better time. We do the science says segments. 
Got it. Caught not drawing again, BB. Shame on you. Bro, streams aren't about drawing. They're about me interacting with fans and pretending I like you guys. Is that Billy Mays? Do you mean Silent Bob? He may as well be Billy Mays. Do they have the anime segment? If you don't give me smokes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna what? Sue us for falling down in the store? Maybe. Oh no. yeah. How much you gonna sue us for? Ten million dollars? Maybe. Don't give him any idea. Kevin Smith is interesting because if you watch his like old ass stuff right now, it's really pretty fucking bad, and it's kind of shocking that he was able to become a professional movie maker. But he came in a time when, I know it's hard to understand now, but he came in a time when media for nerds was actually extremely limited. Unlike now when uh, literally every major movie company is trying to get the nerd money. So if you were sort of this tertiary creator who made jokes for nerds about nerds and stuff like that, and by nerds I mean like comic book nerds, you could make a, a living just off of that because there was so little competition. He's, all of his early stuff, and actually later stuff as well, is just like nerd inside jokes and then sex and weed inside jokes. And uh, none of the jokes are particularly funny, but you have to understand that in early 90s nobody else was doing that. So he was able to carve out a real specific niche for himself when nobody else was doing that. It's completely impossible to understand from the current media climate how rare it was to have that kind of uh you know content that he was creating but it you know he uh he got in on the he was an early adopter and was able to benefit from that i actually tried to watch uh rewatch chasing amy for the first time in like 25 years because it was on Amazon Prime a while ago and uh, it's completely fucking unwatchable and not just from like a gender and sexual politics standpoint which are also extremely outdated. It's uh, it's literally cringe in a way that is uh, you can't handle it. I do think Clerks Two is a good ending to it. I'm I'm glad that he was able to finish off the uh, sitting around and not having a real job saga that is Clerks. Cringer than Hackers? I actually haven't seen Hackers. I probably should watch that. Hackers is cringe in a campy, fun way. Aren't you saying that it's cringe because uh, it has the the 90s technology instead of cringe in, like, another way? Aren't, isn't it cringe like, I'm hacking into the mainframe, hurry, get the floppy disk with five kilobytes worth of data. It has the Pentagon codes in it. That kind of uh, cringe.
the whole depiction of the subculture is hilarious. Yeah, I should probably watch that. Nineties teen films were all around those days. I became sick of them after 10 Things I Hate About You. Was that 90s? I thought that was like mid-2000s. It's 99. Right on the uh, cusp between 90s and 2000. I guess it's still 90s. What year is American Pie? Oh, American Pie was 99 too. Interesting. A lot of shit was going down in 99, wasn't it? Back when I didn't have my own computer, so I had to masturbate with whatever I could. Jacking off to, uh... The five second period in which you got to see that girl's nipples in American Pie was a highlight of my life. It's hard to imagine about uh, the quality of the, the fat material we had back in the 90s. Now that I have my own personally curated hard drive full of the highest quality anime porn which I increase every single day, every single hour by being on the internet, but in the 90s you're like, okay, my parents are asleep. They didn't realize that American Pie was a, uh, a sex comedy that has nipples in it. Now I can finally jack off alone in peace. Feels good, man. Every moment was precious back then. If only the world ended in 2000. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. What kind of an emblem does Space Ghost have on its his cape? It's just like a, a very simplified ghost head, I guess. This is too much details. What a weird ass costume. He has like an emblem of his face directly below his face. As if people can't fucking see his face directly above it. Keep rewinding it, I know. It was definitely on VHS, I think, in 99, so you were just manually rewinding that tape and going back and forth. Nipples are haram, I guess. They are. We must not see the female mammary gland. Male nipples are okay, but female nipples are forbidden. Internet peaked in the Windows XP era. I think there's different opinions on when the internet peaked, but it was definitely before all the normies were let in. To be honest, I prefer actresses in underwear than naked. Nude people are always disappointing. I forgot what her name was, but the uh, the hot foreign girl in American Pie wasn't that disappointing. My penis enjoyed seeing her nipples. 
I also uh, jacked off to her being raped by the snowman in uh, Jack Frost. I believe it was the same actress. She had a very brief period in which she was uh, the sex symbol in like five different movies. I'm surprised Warner Brothers hasn't tried to make serious Space Ghost or Birdman movies in the last 10 years. Warner Brothers is uh, sitting on a shit ton of IP and they have absolutely no idea what to do with it. The fact that they just straight up canceled the Wile E. Coyote vs. Acme movie after it was they're done filming with it for like a tax break or whatever the fuck they did and now they have people yelling at them to release it just shows that they have absolutely no fucking idea what they're doing. I truly believe that Marvel just mind broke them. They're like, we have DC. We need to be uh, just like Marvel. Look, Disney made... 10 billion dollars on their Avengers franchise. We can do the same. We have to be more like it. Hurry, hi hire J.J. Abrams. We need more quips. I'm still pissed about Coyote vs. Acme being cancelled. Right, it's not Wild E, it's Coyote. Coyote is the last name, I forgot. I'm pretty sure it was like a significant part of it was done filming, right? I know they straight up cancelled the, uh, the Batgirl movie. Because they'd rather have a tax write-off than actually produce stuff. I don't know if they did the same for Coyote vs. Acme, but... Yeah, seriously, fuck them. They decide not to release it? I don't know, I don't follow these uh, shit shows. I do miss my, uh, my favorite classic Warner Brothers cartoon characters. And I would watch content of them if they actually released that stuff without fucking LeBron James attached to it. I want to watch the Looney Tunes without LeBron, guys. I like the NBA and I like the Looney Tunes, but I'm not fucking watching Space Jam 2. Space Jam 1 was fucking cringe and so is Space Jam 2. Nobody needed Space Jam 2 except... LeBron for further ego trips and more money. Just Lola Bunny porn. Yeah, I don't really need that either. We don't have much slapstick comedy in the modern era, right? So... I feel like it would just be kind of a refreshing change of pace to see Wiley e. Coyote get blown up on the big screen after his Acme high-speed dynamite-powered skis go wrong or something. We deserve that much. I mean, when you're told that something exists but you can't watch it because the studio wants to have a tax break and they're not releasing it, it's actually really good publicity because it makes you want to watch it. Just like the banned book lists are great publicity for books. It's how it's like how uh, hate isn't the opposite of it, of love. Indifference is the opposite of love. If people are indifferent to your shit, nobody cares. So if you have some sort of uh, Twitter shitstorm because you're refusing to release your content and that's a huge boost if they were if studios were smarter 
they would use this to their advantage instead of actually canceling their shit, but they're not that smart, unfortunately. Slapstick may give wrong ideas to child's ball. Just look at them TikToks. You just need to make sure that you have uh, a helpful PSA announcement at the beginning telling kids that they can't eat the Tide Pods no matter how colorful, colorful and tasty looking they are. Tide Pods are not edible. Despite all the uh, the fucking warnings, it's still crazy that Jackass never got sued. Because if you were growing up in the 2000s and like the MTV culture and shit, you probably knew at least like three kids, especially if you were a guy from your high school, there was at least like three kids who tried doing Jackass stunts in their backyard and like fucking broke their ankle or something. So, uh... All that, you know, white and black jackass do not do these stunts definitely did not work. There were always kids trying to do that shit. Best viewers and followers on streamboo.com. This is why we don't have uh, links in the uh, available in the chat, guys. That's just teen boys in general. True. Guys will punch each other in the nuts until their testicles explode. Whether they have jackass or not. But uh, jackass was definitely not helping. Hystrixia banned Jason 1A. No, Jason, no! My biggest fan has been banned. What have you done? Jason, I'll avenge your death. Mark my words, Hystrixia. Jason? 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 Every single fucking time. <laughs> it never stops being funny. <laughs> It's long, by the way. It's okay. It's like two more minutes. And the fa the face moves at the same time. That's what makes it truly funny.
Congratulations, Ethan. You succeed. <laughs> the father that I have been looking for all these years. A man capable of giving his own life to save his son. I'm afraid that's not possible. I can't breathe. David Cage was a, a fucking genius, man. He's still shotting. He's still shotting, and it's farther away, too. That's what's crazy. The best part is that it's not just like his the voice repeating. It's like different types of Sean and his his mouth keeps on animating as he does the shit. That's what's the, the what makes it so fucking classic. Besides the the Sean glitch, there's also like uh if you just just simply failing all the cutscenes is one of the funniest shit that you can do with uh uh Heavy Rain and David Cage games. Is purposely just failing everything. It shit is funniest shit ever. Uh. Sean! Feels good, man. Like in Detroit, become human, keep tripping and dying. I know, right? I'm too much of a square to play his games like that. So I just choose to not play them at all, but they're like maximum level comedy if you choose to fail at every single thing. Literally all the characters just like fuck up and die. <laughs> the intro where you fail to pick up your side will forever be the most funniest thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh no! Wait, who was the- what was the name of the first son that dies in the beginning? That wasn't Sean? I'm forgetting now. The one where he has to search for him in the, uh, the mall. <sighs> oh, that's right, Jason. Jason! Press X to Jason, guys. Jason! God, I'm so glad my uh, name isn't Jason or Sean because you have like an entire game for your friends to meme on you if you have that name now. Jason! Jason 1-8! Tomb Raider Reboot had those fails too. Yeah, but I assume that they didn't let you fail. Uh, they didn't have any press X to like pick up object failures. The best thing about Heavy Rain is that you can like fail to do like the most basic ass tasks. Failing at Beyond Two Souls is funny because you have badass soldier Ellen Page tripping during boot camp training. Can you die in Beyond Two Souls and have the story continue? Or do you actually get game over screens? Because that's a huge part of the way uh, David Cage games become so funny. Is that you can just like kill off half the, half the task by purposely failing your quick time events. And then, like, it keeps on going, and it's like, oh shit, you get more chances to kill off more characters. This is fucking great. 
press to dodge or get impaled. Yeah, it's more for the uh, the Yona Coomers or good old Coomers who just want to see uh, Lara get impaled on a fucking stake. I like how uh, Crystal Dynamics or Square Enix or whoever was publishing Tomb Raider at the time was like, this is our new Lara Croft model who's more realistic and uh, isn't just a standard sex symbol like the previous Lara. She's an empowered woman. And then it resulted in her getting, uh, having SFM porn of her getting fucked by like 30 horses and stuff. There was a brief period in which, like, 90% of the porn that we had on the internet was just SFM porn of the new Lara Croft model getting fucked by horses. Uh, it's just like, good job there, guys. You really rebooted that character so she wasn't a sex symbol. LMAO. I wish Detroit Become Human has an ending where you get all three main MC dies in the world of Android didn't change at all. I feel like Detroit Become Human is uh, a game that's played 90% by Japanese VTuber streamers. Japanese are way more accepting of American drama because Japanese drama using actual actors fucking sucks ass. So, uh... They're like, they, there's a lot of American drama fans in Japan, so Detroit Become Human really appeals to those people. Whereas if you're actually in, like, Western TV environment, you think it fucking sucks, which it does. Now you cannot even raid Tumps, Tombs. Do they actually try and change the, the, the name of the game or is it like Tomb Raider's subtitle what was it called it's not showing up if I look up Tomb Raider or is it like secret seeker or some shit Tomb Raider game reboot title? See, I can't put in Tomb Raider because uh, they're trying to make her not a fucking Tomb Raider. Was I just being bamboozled by 4chan because it's not showing up? I thought that they were... Oh, tr is it Truth Seeker or something? I forgot what it's called. I thought they were trying to censor the title Tomb Raider itself. Because, uh... They did thought that Tomb Raider is culturally insensitive or some shit. Whatever. This doesn't matter enough. The IP is fucking dead. Unless they finally learn their lesson and actually just go back to cl sexy classic Lara. It's fucking dead as a doornail. Ah, Square Phoenix, yeah, Square Phoenix, yeah, uh, I mean, I'm surprised that Square hasn't gone bankrupt yet, honestly, considering how much, uh, massive failures they keep on shitting out. I guess enough people are probably buying, uh, Final Fantasy VII remakes that it doesn't really matter. 
Also, they probably got a shit ton of money from Sony. Let's wait on drawing the face. Square Enix took all of Lara's sex appeal and put it in Tifa. Tifa's boobs are still too small, though. It's funny because Lara Croft remodel, they had to make her even less sexy by the third game. The first and second games were somewhat sexy, but they were like, oh no, people are making porn of her. So by the third game, they truly, like, nerf her body, so she just kind of looks like a frumpy, normal human being. Final Fantasy XIV is still extremely popular, true. I think we underestimate how much uh, money you can get from weekly subs, or monthly subs, I guess. Once you have the role-playing ERP Catboy sex environment set up. It just generates money. People joining their link shells to uh, do erotic roleplay for the next 30 years. Honestly, looking at the new expansion, it made me want to restart playing Final Fantasy XIV, but what I really want is Final Fantasy XI. Which you can actually still play, of course, but you know what I mean. But what I really want isn't Final Fantasy XI. What I want is to be able to go back to the po my point in my life when I was allowed to play Final Fantasy XI. Instead of, like, being an adult human being. You know, being a miserable, unemployed hikikomori nito. You'll never feel young again feels bad, man. I was playing Final Fantasy XI when I graduated in, from college in 2009, and it was literally impossible to get a job, like a real job, because we were in the middle of the fucking recession. So I was doing part-time work and then playing Final Fantasy XI on the side. Nostalgia hole. We're gonna go full nostalgia. Take this. Listen to Ron Fowl. Final Fantasy XI. Ron. Ron Fowl. It. That was before the lifeguard years. There is no nothing before the lifeguard years. I was a lifeguard since I was a seventeen-year-old. My entire working life was lifeguard years. What the fuck? My computer lagged out for a second right there. Konata taking you back to 2007? Yeah.
He doesn't look a thing like Jesus. He talks like a gentleman playing Guitar Hero in college. Zoomers will not understand. Back in the day, millennials, they played a fake guitar in college and they fucking cooned in their pants when they got perfect on all the guitar notes. I remember Guitar Hero and Rock Band. Those were the days. Half of the songs I still like today, I learned from uh, playing Guitar Hero and shit, because I wasn't really into music. Is there any advice you could give to an amateur beginner illustrator? I'm not really an illustrator, so not really. I really kind of suck at uh, single image illustration type art. I'm more of a mangaka. The advice that nobody actually wa really wants to hear is that you have to draw a lot for a really long period of time before you get good. Which is why when you look on YouTube, every single video is like, I improved at drawing this in two weeks or like one week or some shit. Because nobody wants to tell kids watching YouTube videos the truth that I had to draw this for like 3,000 hours before I got good. I remember parents never bought me any console. Now I can buy my own, but don't have motivation to play any of them. To took PewDiePie on 100 games to be pretty good. Trust me, dude. PewDiePie can only draw floating anime heads. He's not good. Whatever you see on YouTube, when people want to show how good they are, they're showing the like absolute best version of what they did in the best context that they can. If you ask PewDiePie to draw anything besides whatever floating anime head he drew using a reference or whatever, he's not going to be able to draw it. He probably can't even draw different expressions and shit. He's literally at that, uh, the, the stage that every kid, 12 year old kid who decides he wants to draw anime comes to where he draws like a single anime head without the body and he's like, holy shit, I can just do what all the pros can do. I'm literally the same level as Toriyama Akira right now. Toriyama Akira drew an anime head and I also drew an anime head. I'm fucking going to make it. Don't ask anybody to draw anything like hands. Definitely, definitely do not ask anyone to draw hands. That's basically bullying. PewDiePie just be taking reference of anime girls and draws the anime girl in the same way that it looks like. Which is exactly what I'm doing right now. Except that I can't find the uh, a good image of Konata because if you fucking look at Konata, her reference images, literally every single one of them except one or two, she's uh, looking left. Left, left, left. Here's a right one. But I don't think it's actually the the real source. I think this is a, a, a scan or somebody redrew that. That's why I didn't save this image. Left, left, left. Here's a right one. But her hair is hidden, so that doesn't help. See, there's a lot of one where she's looking straight forward, but the hair goes to the left as default when she's looking straight forward. And then some of the ones she's looking right, but the hair is fucking cut off. Google image search really unhelpful in this one. Konata Izumi as Haruhi. 
See, she's looking forward here. Literally, the hair is uh, straight forward. Hair goes to the left. Straight forward. Hair goes to the left. She's almost always looking to the left. It's a real pain in the ass. Just mirror. Yeah, I don't like mirroring shit. Mirroring shit fucks up my uh, my line work because I use a uh, the calligraphy pen. See, even the statue of her, she's her hair is going left. It's like eighty eight percent hair is uh, the hair goes to the left, and then every once in a while she's uh, facing right. If you look at um. There's these rookie manga contests for like jump and stuff where people who haven't gone pro yet send in their manga. And if you look at the editor's comments on them, on like what you should improve, you will frequently actually hear comments or written, there will be written comments from the jump editors being like, uh, you're good at drawing these things, but you need to learn how to draw characters facing uh, this direction because there there will actually be a lot of artists who can only draw anime floating heads, but they can only draw them facing a specific direction, and like their entire manga will be the character facing one direction. It's pretty crazy. So yeah, guys, uh, practice drawing your character from other directions. That's an important part of being an artist. Three-fourth rules, everything. I mean, you guys know about uh, Astro Boy hair? This is a term used to refer to Astro Boy hair, which... Astro Boy's hair, which is like these pointy triangles, except it exists in this uh, weird world in which... Like, it's like this Lovecraftian world in which shit doesn't make sense from like a Euclidean geometry perspective. Astro Boy's hair, like, it just has... Tezuka Osama just decided he was going to draw Astro Boy's hair in specific ways from specific angles, but it doesn't make any kind of sense from a 3D perspective. And there's a lot of anime characters who are actually like that. Like, you only draw them from like five different directions, and uh, there are they don't exist in from some directions. It's pretty interesting. When I was playing Final Fantasy XI, I was, uh, my home nation was Bastok, so this feels extremely comfy. Just, uh, running in the, the desert, Gustaberg Desert. You want to go back, but you can't. Huh. My computer's lagging out again. This happened around the same time in the previous stream. It's probably something to do with the stream. Alright guys, I'm going to end the stream now because uh, I have no idea what's going on. But uh, I think I might have to update OBS or something. I've been ignoring OBS updates. Yeah, I can't, I actually can't do anything right now. Yeah, weird. Alright, see you around guys. Good night.